guys for being here again. Um, Africa on the Move, my guest is DJ Zulu. This is the first DJ we have here in our show. So today we're going to play a lot of music. We're going to listen to a lot of music. Uh, what, what, what kind of music, if I ask you to play music right now, what kind of music are you going to propose to me, to oh, viewers? I'm going to play African music. <laughs> of course, of course. That's, that's, that's interesting, that's interesting. So uh, what is your favorite music? Tell me. Oh, my favorite music is African music. African music. Because I'm from, from Africa. Okay, but you're from Guinea, right? I'm from Guinea. Okay. Yes. So if, uh, all right, I respect that. You are a good gig here. So you work for all the communities. Yes. Good, good. So you are the president of um, the mm. Association of DJ, African DJ in, in United States, right? Yeah. United States. United okay, States. so the 52 states. Yeah. So t tell me how you guys are organized and Tell me how you, you have been elected as president of this association. Oh, thank you, before. Okay, thank you, Mr. Toss. Oh, I'm gonna start for, to tell you, to tell everybody, I'm so happy to be with you guys. Um, the idea coming from uh, us leader, GJ, because, uh, you know, we was a uh, lot of people, GJ, in the United States, but we was not together. You know, everybody, everybody was doing different way. But we decided, you know, it's not easy to, to connect all the DJ together in one city. That means we got one event, somebody called all the DJ for one event in the New York. We say, okay, doc, this opportunity, we're not gonna lose that one. We have to elect one president to gonna take care to us. Since we gotta be together, we gotta, we gotta elect the new, the, the, the new president. That means we come like uh, almost like 10 GJ was there. The, the old GJ, they decided to take me like the president for now. So how many DJ uh, are in the association? In the association, we have 20 GJs. 20 DJ for the whole state? For the whole state. So there are no Dharmak DJ in New York City and in the United States? That's what a lot of people, they're not coming in force. You know, okay. the people who study. It's the 20 now. Okay. But a lot of people will start coming, start coming. So, start so coming. since when have you been elected? Uh, since uh, April 21, the last year. Okay. So 20 DJs, and you expect to have more DJs? Yeah, I expect to have a lot of more DJs. Okay. So tell me, when uh, you have a counter, when people call you to, to, to cover the event, mm -hmm. uh, did they call you as a president or they call you individually? Oh, but that's, that question is very nice. Thank very you. good question. Well, you know, everybody have the preference for the DJ. Like uh, some people can like me, some people can like another DJ. That means they call different DJ. If you got advanced, whatever DJ is good to you, you call that DJ. That's going to come to your advance. Like example, I'm in the New York DJ. I'm, I'm from New York. If somebody want to do their advance in the New York, you got to call me. I'm going to ask my other DJ if they're not busy to come join to me to do the parties. That's where we work. So because you are the president, so do you think people call you the most because they say, okay, we have a president. So uh, you take advantage. Do you? Okay. Um, that kind of thing is a little bit difficult to say. I'm the president for the DJ, but it's not mean I'm the best DJ for all them. You know, I'm not the best mixer. You know, I'm the president. All right? Because they, can, they take me like president because they see something in me, oh, a lot of people don't have it. Okay. But it's not like I know, I know the DJ than them. No. So, so tell me what do you bring, uh, since you've been elected president, what, what did you bring new on the table? Oh, okay, that's a very nice question. Thank you. Okay, um, I bring a lot of things on the table. Because the first thing, we was not together. That's what I'm explaining to you. Mm. A lot of people do separately the DJ stuff. But now, we can join together to do one advance together. That's one. Now, we, we got the line, the WhatsApp line. A lot of people can change the message. If, for example, one DJ need any song, he can write in that WhatsApp, I need this song. One DJ can bring that song to him. That's very uh, advantage for this DJ staff. I bring something again. Like, uh, example, I'm in the community for the New York DJ. You understand? Any DJ can come here to play for the community if they don't ask me. You understand what I mean? 
like uh, my, my Guinean community, they want to do something about my independence. The, any DJ can come to another state to come to play in the New York. They have to ask me why they don't take you. Before that was now. Every DJ can come anywhere, anywhere to play. Now you are more organized. Yes. And uh, you know what, um, DJ, I, I really like you. Uh, I like the job you do, you do, your work. You are very professional. And uh, I see you a lot on different events, right? Mm. And you are very famous, you know? You are very famous. People like you. Yeah, uh, I really want to do that, that job too, DJ, but um, I'm really scared, you know? Uh, I don't want women to run after me. So are you in the same situation too? Oh, you know, yeah, I'm in the same situation because <laughs> <laughs> if you he, if he work in, if you do the DJ, a lot of people take the different way, you know. Okay. If he, you DJ, a lot of people going to say the DJ have a lot of women. It's not that. Okay. The DJ cannot get a lot of women because okay. if you got a lot of women, you got to work in for free. Yeah. You understand? That's why we we too close for the women because the women give us the contract. But it's not all women, we, we deal with them, you know. But the people think if he's the DJ, Everybody, every woman is your woman. No, it's not that. Okay. That's why. Okay, yeah, yeah, I understand. So um, tell me, when you dig it sometime, uh, I, I can hear you and others dig it saying, example, when they make a comment, they say, you see that lady, she's the most beautiful lady. She has, uh, uh, her dress costs $2,000. She has 20 cars. She has houses. Uh, this is African way of doing DJ, and I really like this. Is that always true when you say, you make this kind of comment to people, you say they have this and that, is that true? No, so it's not true. <laughs> but a lot of things true, you know. Okay. You know, if you want to comment somebody, if he, if he is in the zero degree, the DJ have to take that lady to the 10 degrees. Okay. That's why she got to feel she's self-comfortable. Okay. That's why we do that qualification for some lady, they're not like that, you okay. know, but I, I didn't understand. Job, I, didn't, I really didn't understand that because, so uh, uh, people who attend the show, who dance, who attend the show, they, they know that it's just a comment? The people cannot know that because that's all <laughs> still, you know. If he, <laughs> no, some is going to be, some people, if you say the dress is like thousand, mm. it's going to be right. Okay. But some is not. Okay. But that DJ, you have to be yourself free, you know, to give the people qualification, you know. What is your your biggest gift you, you, you ever had doing this job? My big gift? Yeah. Oh, that's my big gift is my popularity. Good. Yeah, the I love people, that. The people, I'm too close for the people. Wow. You know, I know what they want, you know. I know they like their music, you know, they like the dancing. You are a DJ. You a DJ for the African community, right? For your community. Do you try to explore others, others places like American places, like a big, big clubs to, to do your DJ? Oh yeah, um, you know, the DJ, a lot of DJ have different style to play. Some chant DJ like to play at the club. Some DJ like to play at the wedding, at the host, you know. But me, like me, I can play with the club DJ, but it's not, it's difficult for me to play with the club DJ. Why? Because, you know, if you want to play with the club, you have to deal with too many people, you know. Mm -hmm. That means you got to play with different, all the songs. Okay. That means I don't want to get into that one How busy, much, how busy you, know. you are? How busy you are? Yeah, I go, okay, I go all the state in the wow. America because I'm a very busy guy. Really? Yeah, that's right. At why. least you are one country a, a, a week. Yeah, at least I got one country a week. Wow. Week. The second part is now um, is albinism. Let's talk about that. I don't know if you have any people who ask questions about albinism here. So, you, how people see you here? Did they see you uh, differently to other people? Oh, that's a good question. That's, Thank you. I'm so glad to talk about myself. Oh, know? wow. That's the main important to my DJ staff. Really? Yeah, because I'm like I'm free to talk about me. Okay. I'm free to talk about the albinism, you know. Thank you. I know the albinism. So, so first question: Did you ever talk about that on the television here? No. No. Why? No. You've been here for years. Yeah, I've been here for uh, for years, but you know, if you don't have opportunity, it's not it's not easy. Okay. You know, but now I have opportunity okay. to talk about the albinism. Okay. Thank you. Uh, albinism in the America, 
is different to Africa. Mm. Because in America, they can see you a little bit differently. Mm. Because why? They know if they do something about the albinism here, you can complain. You know, they got human rights here. Too many human rights. But in Africa, that's very worse for the albinism people in the Africa. Because too many people is black people, you know. If you got the minority white, they think you everything. You know, they can take you for the sacrifice. They can, they can, they, their mind is very, very, very tough for the albinism people in Africa. You know, that's why we look like that, you know. They look differently. They do a lot of things. You, know, it's, it's, you cannot imagine for somebody can do that one with his human rights. You know? So recently, you were in Guinea, right? Yeah. Um, do you think the mentality changed in Guinea? About albinism? About albinism, yeah. But now the mentality, they changed a little bit about the albinism. Mm. Because a lot of albinism people, they try to integrate by themselves in the community. You know, because you got the albinism who they sign in. Mm. That means if you don't like him because he's albinism, you got to like him because he's, he's wise, you know. That means in Africa, in the Guinea, we still change a little bit, little bit, little bit, but we got more to do. Oh, you see, that, that's the reason I'm coming here. That's the because reason came, uh, yeah. it's a lot of persecution okay. about the albinism people. That's why I'm coming here to get my freedom. Okay. Know. So, since you came here, how did you empower people uh, back home in your country? Did you try, how did you help them? Oh, okay. Uh, that's good. Because uh, since I'm come here, I put something in my mind. I'm come from Africa. I live a lot of albinism people in Africa. I know what they suffer. That's why the first thing I'm come here, I'm trying to build my organization for the Africa, in the, my, my uh, uh, organization to help the albinism in the Africa. Did you put all the paper work together? Uh, yeah, I put some paper together, but it's not finished yet. But we've been here a long time. You should well, start a long time. Yeah, that's true. But, you know, in the America, you have to go step by step. Okay. You know? That's why I'm going step by step. But since... If I try to go to Africa, I buy something for the albinos, al some, some albinos, you know, mm. to buy some sun cream to protect themselves about the sun. That means I got a lot of that stuff to bring for them. Okay. So you say in terms of human rights, coming here to America is a good thing. Also, for the protection of your skin too, the weather is, yeah. is also nice too, right? Yeah. So do you encourage people to come here? Oh, yeah. If anybody has chance to come to America, if you're albinos, I tell you to come because you got a lot of safety. Mm. You know, you got, you got a lot of human rights. You got a lot of people who are going to help you. You know, you can get a lot of things, the medical problem, you know, the skin cancer problem. You can fix all that one. But if you're in Africa, you got to stay in the sun. You know, the sun going to take your, sun, the, your skin damage. You know, you don't know, you know, because you don't have any support people, you know. That's what, what, what is one message you want to tell to elected official in your country? Oh, I'm going to tell my leader for my country, the albinism is not like uh, the people thinking. The albinism is part of the black people. You know, if you albinism, it's not like uh, you know the human rights, you know. you the human rights. That's just, I'm going to tell to my leader to take care to the albinism in Africa. If you don't do that, it's going to be very, very, very hard for the albinism people. Thank you. Uh, thank you, DJ, for coming here. I want to ask you a personal question. Are you married? Yes, I'm married. Good. Is your wife albino? No, my wife, she's not albino. She's oh, wow. A, she's she's a, um, black. She's um, from our community? Yeah, she's from, she from Guinea. You plan to have children? Of course, yeah. Okay, do you have any? No, not yet. Okay. I wish you good luck. Thank but you. But not too many kids, because they too much problem. <laughs> no, because I'm trying to get like two, it's okay. Okay, you know, thank you so much, Digge. No problem, thank and you so much. One, one last message to Digge Association here. One strong message to Digge Association. Oh, Look at the this thing camera. I want to do with my colleague GJ to be together. Because, you know, if you do the same job, you have to be together. That's why you got to get strong. That's why we're now, we together, we strong. Ladies and gentlemen, April 27 is the independence of Togo and Sierra Leone. And for the first time in the United States, to my knowledge, what I know, uh, two countries decided to organize this event, this celebration, this commemoration. It's Togo and Sierra Leone. 
And people who made this event possible are here today in the studio. I'm going to introduce you uh, on my right hand side. You have Togo, and the left hand side, you have, of course, Syria Leon. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, my name is uh, DJ Yves Togo. Yeah, I'm from Togo. Uh, I live in New York City. Uh, my name is Junaidu Titipina. In the community, uh, people know me uh, as uh, Mr. Titi. I am the president of African People Alliance. Hi, everyone. My name is Zainabu Sese Harrell. Some of you may know me. I am from Sierra Leone, born, raised here in New York. My name is Mohamed Samkaba. I was born and raised in Sierra Leone. I moved into the United States at my late teen age, and then I live in Long Island. My first question to you guys, could you tell our viewer why did you guys decide to, to organize this event together? Is there any a special uh, relation between your two countries that bring you to do this show? Yes. So, okay, yeah. Okay, as we know, ECOWAS has been a good initiative for our 16 countries in Africa, which is in West Africa. And uh, besides that, we got Sierra Leone and Togolese are getting together in this city very well. I don't know what reason, but we are just getting well. Mm -hmm. And then I think that 27 April means something for our countries. Uh, uh, what we want you to explain us is to tell us, why did you decide we can, we to, have, yes. yeah, we have the same independence days. Okay, so uh, uh, you know Morocco, the the Spanish part is also 27, right? So why did you, why you guys didn't uh, well, celebrate with Morocco as well, well? Well, I think I can talk a little bit okay. on that. Um, uh, these guys, um, <clears throat> I think they're being real humble with it. Um, as you can hear, we all collectively work together. We yeah. all have yeah. a common relationship. It's when I started dealing good. with the Sierra Leone community, he was probably the first person I dealt with coming to New York City. Yeah. Like actually the first person in my community that wasn't my family. And so that's why I take him as a brother. The first person that introduced me to working with the African community was him, Titi. Titi. Yeah. And so through Titi, I met him. And we've all been inspiring each other to do projects, whether it's my pageant, their pageant, advocacy, our advocacy. Togo, if I give you a little bit of background, just in something recent, when we had the Ebola crisis, yeah. these two, these two countries, Togo was the first people to do relief for Sierra Leone, actually in the state of New York. Togo, silently, they did it for us. They were the first persons to bring attention for us. When we did a fundraiser, not even, we didn't even start it. Togo did it on behalf of Sierra Leone. Wow. So it's almost like, it just made perfect sense. We're having an independence, and this is not only for Togo and Sierra Leone. We are celebrating Africans. Mm -hmm. We are celebrating Africans worldwide. We are very pan-Africanist in our mindset. And so what, that's what we've been embracing. We, we want people to see if Togo and Sierra Leone can come together whether we speak English or French, yeah. to come together to celebrate our independence. And it's like, what, what are we doing since independence in our countries? And I think we are living proof of what people should be doing yeah. since independence. The whole essence of the freedom is to be doing things like Thank this. Thank you. So I'm going to ask you a very embarrassing question, maybe. <laughs> yes. Um, so you've been here for years, right? 20, 25, 30 years. But so why did you decide now to do that together for the first time, 2019? Uh, well, like, like you just said, my big brother, DJ A, like we work in the same club. We've been doing stuff together. And then sometimes usual come to Mr. Titi's event. So last year, and then cause usually we, like we book the same club most of the time. So like we get conflict. We, like we get jammed up. Yeah, so then I called him earlier this year, right? Yeah. And then it's like somebody booked the club. So then it's like he's gonna do the boats, right? So that's wow. what, yeah, that's yeah. what like we're like let's work together and then we can just make one 
for Parley. Sergio instead of going back and forth. Okay, that's yeah. a, that's amazing. So after the party, now I'm gonna ask you a question about uh, independence is first. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me, guys, uh, how people perceive, how people see the celebration of uh, the independence of your two countries? They see it as simple ritual or a way of thinking, right, of mm -hmm. African development. Uh, when it comes to independence, some people, I don't know if uh, DJ Eve uh, <laughs> well, getting that, that question, people ask me, are we really independent? Right. Yes. That's what we yes. do. You know, That's and uh, when you, uh, I can, if you were going to compare Sierra Leone um, Togo to Sierra Leone, I think Sierra Leoneans are more independent than wow. us. Yeah, Togo. Wow. Because we are being ruled by the same family for 52 years now. And people now are dying fighting that regime. You know, that less than uh, 10, I mean, to, to a, la, la, less than a month, a month, we lost a brother uh. who was killed. Yeah. But this year, I think we already lost two people. Last wow. year, we lost about seven, five to seven. Yeah. Yeah. You know, people are keep fighting the regime so that we also can enjoy that independence. Mm. You know, the country is so corrupt, but we thank God things are moving kind of peacefully, not peacefully, mm -hmm. because we pray that war never happen. Mm -hmm. Civil yeah. war never happen. Yeah. You know, because war is never good. Mm -hmm. You know. Other than that, independence, we celebrated it since uh, people like my age, since the seven days of, hey, happy, uh, you That's know, it's been set yeah. up. Yeah. We were holding the flag and we're little. Mm -hmm. Until today, I still have that spirit. People, mm -hmm. a lot of my schoolmates, they already passed away. I still yeah. remember them, the way yeah. we were celebrating the, the, the April 27th. Yeah. It's um, good memories. And as uh, for us as Sierra Leone, it's, uh, you know, it's funny how they mention that uh, we're celebrating 58 years of independence. And for us, it's, you know, it's striking when you hear them saying, you know, are they still free, but at least they didn't go to war. Mm -hmm. And then look at Sierra Leone. We had a civil war over a decade, and we still have the effects, the after effects of that. And so this is where a lot of our work comes from. It's like, you know, we are supposed to be free and independent, but we still face a lot of challenges in the country and in the continent and outside of the continent. People so, don't know. So my, my next question, how is the Sierra Leone diaspora and Togo diaspora uh, impacting uh, the country politically, economically. Lots what, of ways. What, 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 what are you doing to bring change to your countries? Um, well, what I do like, what I like about um, the democracy that America allows for us is the freedom of not only speech, mm -hmm. um, the free thought for us to advocate for our communities, for us to say how we feel. Um, and um, also to gather us together. I think African countries where our power lies is in us uniting together like this. Um, I get inspired a lot from the Togolese community. I'll say it public. Togolese community, I love them. They've helped and inspired us in so many ways. And so with that, I feel like there's a lot of groups that are erupting in the diaspora, whether they're here in America, they're in England, in the UK, you have people in Asia. You have a lot of groups that, whether it's dealing with politics, a lot of us deal with health and education, a lot of us are dealing with environmental factors. But the thing is, it's like what I think what we all push is at any age is, whether it's the youth or older, is to get involved, to be involved some way. You know, sometimes people look at me, I'm a mom with three kids, what are you doing on a boat ride? One of the things we have to think about is, uh, is uh, the representation of the diaspora in the assembly. That can change things in, you know, in Africa. Are you, your diaspora is represented in, in assembly? No. no. No? So why, can you give me a sense why? I remember one but, time. But now, I think now, in, back in Togo, they have a minister for the diaspora yes, this exactly, year. Yeah. This year they elect the minister in Togo okay. mm. who, who, have, who, who can solve the diaspora problem. problem. But we don't have, right now we don't have the, any, any 
we don't to go don't have a, we cannot elect president here too. We don't have we, we cannot do it. Yes. But we're fighting for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You just mm -hmm. mentioned something very uh, yeah. important. I, I, I never asked uh, Zainab that question, but I don't think you do. Uh, Sierra Leone ha do vote here? Vote here? Unfortunately, mm -hmm. we don't. No. Oh, but wow. we've been... We've been <sighs> that's such a touchy subject for oh, us. Wow. This because, is a good question right now. Because yeah. let, let, let's be honest, you know, when you see the new era and yeah. the new administration that we have, yeah. if any of us have problems, it's so easy for us to possibly get deported back to these countries. Yeah. We support these countries. We ship. We send. We send money. Mm -hmm. We do education. And you don't vote. So, but we're not allowed to, to vote. vote. Yeah. And so that, that hurts the African. Yeah. Because that's where a lot of the power comes from, being able to be involved yeah. in the policies, yeah. involved in what's going on in the country. And a lot of us are the people who help develop the country. Yeah. And so that's something that we, it's on the conversation of all Africans. We would like that process. We've petitioned for it for different, different administrations. I think countries would be better if the people in the diaspora were allowed to vote. I think it would even encourage more people in the diaspora to do more back home yeah. know, because I, you have a voice. I, mm -hmm. I want to say a little bit about that because I don't like talking about politics. Oh, yeah, yeah, we don't normally. Because this past election <laughs> in Sierra Leone, yeah. because a lot of diaspora went back home to go stand for offices. Yeah. And then when they knew that they have a citizenship with outside, yeah. so like they took the Disqualified. The yeah. Yeah. They're not allowed. Sad. They went through the process, all the process, Quitting everything. Jobs. And then at the end of the day, and then the government came with, us, with whatever they say, okay, if you have any citizenship from any other country, mm -hmm. you are disqualified. So they call them the two sin. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, my last question to you guys uh, after this celebration is this an occasion for you guys? to work together. She's, she mentioned before of course. Ebola yeah. stuff, right? Of course. Is yeah. there another way for you to of, Okay. Of course. Oh, that's, yeah. that's, that's the connection yeah. now. That, that, because yeah. we're going to share our culture. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. This is a platform we're building, not, not for, like, for the next generation coming. Yeah. So it's like, because like we, like, I don't want to say some stuff over here, because like I'm on the ear now. Sometimes we just want to keep it privately. So like, when we get, put all the instruments together, yeah. and then we can say it mm -hmm. out again. So, okay. But this is going to be like, it's a long no, time relationship. relationship. Okay. Yeah. So and the, that the, relationship also, it's not only at the low level. Yeah. I remember when uh, it was uh, uh, water, rain that happened. Yeah. And the mud slide. The mud slide. Yeah. 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 yeah, Togo yeah. present, then the, Togo never did that. He just left Togo. Mm -hmm. And went and donate. Wow. Yeah. A lot mm -hmm. of Togolese, some people like me, even though we were in some situations, we applauded because the love we have, the relationship was yeah. Even Thank you. though some people criticize it. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. That's you know, yeah. see, people also tell oh, we have our own problem. Why are you taking money, going to well, give? Yeah. But we have to this work time, together. Yeah, this yeah. time didn't happen. Together. Okay, I'm going to give the floor to. Zen, we have two more minutes? Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Um, I, we just want to thank everyone for tuning in tonight. We really want everyone to understand that it's so important just to celebrate ourselves, celebrate ourselves as being Africans. Thank you very much for, uh, to my guests for being here today. Thank, thank you. you. And I hope you see you next time for the, another show. Thank After you. the show. Africa Move. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Mr. Back. Karim uh, yeah. Taj. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you, Liman Kala. Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.